Hey guys, my name is Pavan and today I'm going to go over how to master Soldier 76 in Overwatch. I'm going to go over some critical things when it comes to Soldier 76 such as positioning, Perfect. how to improve aiming, and game sense. So let's get started. All right, guys. So in this video, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna talk about Soldier 76's abilities, and then I'm gonna tell you how you can master them, and then I'm gonna tell you about the game sense aspect of them, so you can make the most out of those abilities when you're playing in your competitive matches. So I'm gonna talk about the heavy pulse rifle, the sprint, helix rocket, tactical visor. Talk about how you can master each of those skills, and then I'm gonna talk about positioning aspect of Soldier 76, and I'm gonna talk a little more than just getting high ground. And then I'm gonna end the video with some in-game commentary of me playing, so you can kind of see what's going on in my head, and that way you also know what, what to look at when you're playing in your matches. So let's get started. All right guys, so I think Soldier 76 is probably one of the most underrated heroes in the game, especially when it comes to climbing up the Overwatch ranks. And the reason for that is that he is actually one of the most forgiving heroes in the game. Now the reason why I say he's forgiving is because of his ability to sprint. Sometimes you might just find yourself in a bad position throughout the game and because of his sprint ability you can just get away from it without too much hassle. Like for example if a Reinhardt is charging at you, if you're McCree and you're in close quarters you're kind of in trouble. But if you are Soldier 76 you can get away from that and go back to your team's safety and you actually pulled that Reinhardt out of position. All right, so when it comes to mastering Soldier 76, the number one ability that you have to have besides positioning has to be your ability to aim. Now, Soldier 76's heavy pulse rifle is automatic, which means that you're gonna have to utilize your tracking ability at medium to long range. So this is unlike someone like a McCree or a Anna who uses a lot of hit scan. This is, this is more of tracking. So this is something that you have to practice in either the Overwatch Workshop or Kovacs Aim Trainer, as I've said in previous videos, to really master. And once you can master Soldier's aiming and his burst rifle, you'll really be able to unlock his true potential. One of the main things you have to understand is that his automatic rifle has a crosshair. And then the longer you fire, the longer the crosshair blooms, which means the more you lose accuracy. So if you really want to fire at a small target from far away, the best thing to do is to fire in short bursts so that way the bloom becomes negligible and you remain accurate over medium to long distances whenever you're targeting something. Now if you're shooting at a tank like a Roadhog or a D.Va at even medium distance, what I just said becomes completely negligible because bloom doesn't matter. So in that situation, just continue to spam your primary fire and you're going to see that you can really shred large tanks with Soldier 76 which is really great. So as you can see, the aim arena code that I just gave you right now on Overwatch Workshop is a great way to practice different types of ways to shoot with Soldier 76. You can practice close range tracking, you can practice long range tracking, you can practice firing in bursts so you don't get affected by bloom very often and retain your accuracy. So this is something that you should be doing every day before you start playing and when you're warming up so that way you set yourself up in a good position to be able to take advantage of one of Soldier 76's strong abilities. All right guys, so now that we've talked about how to master Soldier 76's pulse rifle, let's talk about how you can put yourself in positions during the game to get the most damage output out of it and take advantage of your new mastered ability. So yeah, I'm talking about positioning because you're not gonna have a lot of damage output if you're shooting at a Rhine shield or a Winston shield all game. That's one of the major things that you have to understand as a Soldier 76 player. It's to position yourself in places where you are not shooting at shields, but instead other heroes. So this is the point where typically a video would say that you should be a high ground Andy and always have high ground throughout the game so that way you can get easy picks. And while that's true and I agree with it, I think some people get a little too carried away with high ground where their mindset just becomes to, to get high ground at all costs, even if it is probably the worst position to be in. So I think more importantly, what you should be doing is you should be positioning yourself in safe places where you have direct line of sight to the enemy. 
but you are not shooting into their shields. And at the same time, you're also in a position where if a Winston or a Diva were to dive on you, you can sprint to safety fairly easily without dying. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be on high ground. There's a lot of places in certain maps where you might not be on the high ground, you might be on the same level as the enemy team, but you're in a flanking route. And flanking routes are great because that is what allows you to make sure that you're not shooting into shields, but you're actually shooting at other heroes. Now let's talk about Soldier 76's Helix Rocket. It's one of those abilities that can really help you with burst damage throughout the game. You can start off by either burst rifling your opponent and then throw in a quick helix grenade or you can throw in the helix missile first. It really depends on the situation and what you want how you want to approach it. But at the end of the day, it's an extremely effective tool for burst damage at long range and short. I think a lot of people just use it short to mid range, but I've used it at times long range and it can really catch someone off guard because it comes at you pretty fast and it does a massive amount of damage and obviously it has no drop off damage. A great time to use it is often when you're flanking, you can usually find a healer that it might be standing still or he, he or she might be moving around in a very predictable moving pattern and what you can do is you can time your helix rocket so it hits them direct and then you can burst fire them off and you can quickly spread back to your team now you have a one-man advantage against the opposition now another ability that soldier IPC has is his, is his biotic field which allows you to heal um, pretty much to maximum health and you know it can also act as a great way to heal your whole team now that, that's something that everyone knows but what I don't see people do often is comboing the biotic field with a healing pod that might be located throughout the map somewhere. So what I mean by this is wherever you set up, you know, maybe even maybe even if it's high ground, make sure there's a healing pod that is nearby. So that way if you get dived on by a tank or by a tank like Winston or Diva and you start running away towards your team, maybe there's a healing pod on the way to your team so you can take advantage of that heal pod that is located within your flank route so now you have now you get to take advantage of two healing options so you have the heal pod and then you also have your biotic field that you have when you get back to your team so always make sure you're aware of the map and you know the surroundings in terms of where you've set up a soldier um you know comboing with a heal pod um, is a great way to make sure you always have extra health in the tank now let's talk about soldier 76 is old so the visor is obviously an ult that you know gives you the aimbot and it's a very powerful ult but I think a lot of people use it the wrong way. Now I think one of the most common things that's, that's said about this ult is that you should always be catching the enemy by surprise. But more importantly what you should be doing is putting the enemy in a checkmate position. Because Overwatch has gone to a point now in season 20 where everyone kind of knows what you're going to eventually do. Everyone knows that tactical visor is coming. So what you have to make sure is that you have to put yourself in a position where the enemy knows that you're going to ult, but they can't do anything about it. And the, so you have to put them in a checkmate position. Now there's two ways to do this. Most of the time to have the checkmate, you have to have to, you have to check both of these things. So number one, you have to have great position in terms of having view of the enemy. So for example, Hanumara point B, when you're on the top right or top left, you know, the enemies in the wide open, if you ult, they can't do much because there's not many places to hide behind. So that's an example. Now the second thing that you have to check off is obviously making sure that their cooldowns are all down. Um, you have to make sure like for example if a D.Va is in your game you have to make sure she's d -mech. If there's a Rhine you have to make sure that his shield is kind of destroyed so he can't put it up and you know protect his teammates. So yeah so before you ult make sure you put the enemy in a checkmate position. If you put them in a checkmate position then you're going to pretty much a multiple kill ult every time and you'll be successful now the second way to utilize this ult it's a lot less effective and you're gonna get a lot a lot less value out of it but again overwatch is a situational game and there's always certain times where you can do it and that is you know a zoning ult kind of like a mccree now i think if you do a zoning ult with soldier you're really losing value at some point in the game that might be necessary like hanumara point a if the enemy's coming through the choke and your tank's shields are down and you know if it's a last resort it might not be a bad idea to just do a zoning ult if it's necessary and so so that's the second way to utilize it obviously it's much less value but again overwatch is a game where you don't know what you might have to do so it's always important to kind of have that in your back pocket just in case you need it another thing you always have to remember is that you can always combo your ult 
uh, with other characters. Now the most notable character that combo your, comb your ult with is Anna. Her nano will really make you overpowered against many characters and you'll really kill a lot of characters fast. Another great character to combo your ult with is Sigma because as he raises everyone into the sky, everyone's going to be right there for easy pickings for you to pick off with your ult. Alright guys, so the, what you're watching here is uh, Gail Adelaide, he's a pro player. Uh, he's really, really good Soldier 76 player, so I just wanted to put a quick clip in here uh, of Soldier, uh, of his gameplay here. I just want to talk about him on defense right here. You see he starts on the top with high ground, but like that spot becomes dangerous, so he jumps down. Now, a lot of times I see players trying to stick it to the high ground, even if it becomes pretty dangerous. You saw he jumped down there. Now you can see him trying to alternate, uh, attack the other team from an alternate angle there and instead of looping around he actually comes back and fights with his team and he picks another uh, alternate angle to attack the enemy team so he doesn't have to shoot through shields as you can see right here. Um, great positioning throughout the, ho the whole way. He got a Helix Rocket in there to give him a lot of ult charge. It was right through the middle. I, I tell you guys, you know, you don't want to shoot through shields, but in certain situations, it might not be a bad idea. In this situation, shooting the shield down helps because it, it prevents the enemy team from coming into the point because, you know, if they don't have a shield, they're going to take a lot of damage and they're going to start backing off. Now, uh, they're going to lose this fight because of the mail. So this is the start of another fight. You can see this time he's on the high ground. Um, he's constantly shooting at the shields to make sure that they're not at full health <clears throat> so he can help with the, to facilitate damage. He's maintaining high ground there. There was It was dangerous over there, but he's still maintaining it. He's being a constant nuisance to the other enemy team because there's nothing more annoying than a soldier 76 that goes uncontested on high ground. And right now he just, he, he isn't being contested because they don't exactly have someone who can do a lot about him being there. So he's constantly being disruptive. And you can see the enemy team's kind of, they're, they're, they have to change positions. They're really fo distracted by him and they haven't been able to get on the point. So he finally drops down because his Baptist calls out that he's gonna ult and he's able to take advantage of the Baptist ult. And you're gonna see, start seeing him start DPSing everyone down. And you know he, he, he puts himself in a terrific position throughout the whole fight. So the enemy team can't really do much. All right guys, this is Taimu, another pro player. He's really good at Soldier 76 as well. Um, guys, remember I, got, I remember I told you guys to have to be aware of healing pods along your flank routes. So if you get dived on by a Debra or Winston, you can combine your biotic field with the healing pod. Well, you can see he did exactly that. He he was aware of healing pods nearby, so he used his sprint ability to grab those on his way to his team while he was getting dived on by a Diva and Winston to stay alive. And he had enough healing on his way to his team so he could stay alive and then finally get healed by Anna. Like that is a really really good way example of utilizing healing pods nearby and then comboing them with your biotic field so you get extra life. This is something that I never see a lot of players do and I think it, it can be really effective and deadly at any at any rank so make sure you do this. Alright guys so this is Korean pro player Prime. Um, he's also top 500 and he's playing soldier 76 here on Volskaya and they're attacking and while the reason I'm showing you guys this is because uh, it's all about the tactical visor I told you guys about how you want to coordinate the tactical visor and you're gonna see that he coordinates the tactical visor really well with this team here um, he coordinates uh, it with the Anna boost and at the same time Lucio does a speed boost to get them onto the point very quickly and the opposing Lucio is going to do a sound blast, but they're able to counter that pretty easily because of the Ana boost. And you're gonna see he starts off with a kill right away. And um, it, and he's able to maneuver around because of the speed boost and get a pick, get picks pretty easily. And right here, he's gonna avoid the Diva bomb. He used to get picks. He, right there, he uses it. He looks much really well to kind of burst out the diva. Um, he burst down the tracer. He gets multiple picks in this um, scene right here. And eventually, they would go on to kind of cap the point after the opposing team would, you know, throw a bunch of stall heroes at them. But uh, essentially, they win this fight because they start off with that you know, beautifully combined Anna boost and speed boost into Soldier 76 Tactical Visor. 
So this is something you guys should always con continually think. The most important thing in Overwatch is is old economy and. Um, if no matter what rank you are, always try to coordinate your tactical visor with one of your teammates' ults. It will always help, and it can be the difference between a win or a loss. And this is this this play that play right here won won the video. And thanks for watching the video, guys. Remember to subscribe uh, and leave a like. Also, like if you have any questions or if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Uh, and hopefully, you guys learned something from this video that will improve your. Uh, skills as a competitive player and uh, I'll see you guys next time